All righty. Yeah, hi. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late night. Raw 30th anniversary review. Raw is XXX, the 30th anniversary of Raw. It's time for your Raw review. 30 years. I did a live stream. I did a live show. I did a special for the people episode where I covered Raw. Basically, I did a live show. I did a live reaction. I'll put a link in the description if you didn't watch it. For 30 years, Raw has been live. Yet they can't. They don't know how to cut, have a good call. That yet they don't know how to time their show their shows properly. They're they're getting cut off. First of all, that's a bad way to end on an anniversary show. Okay, let's be fucking honest here. That's the worst way you could do for your anniversary show. Second of all, here's my problem. And I'm sorry, I, 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 it's not like I wanted to hate the show. I don't hate, the, first of all, by logic, this was the better, this was the probably the best show of Raw so far of this year. Why? Because it was the anniversary and they did some certain good things. But the problem here is the show went downhill after the sec, when the second hour started. The first hour, I will say, was pretty good. First hour was pretty good. But then... The show went way downhill. The show went way downhill. Why? Because just basically, you know, they. let's be honest here. No one cares about women's goddamn wrestling. That's when it starts going downhill. And you start incorporating wrestlers that no one gives a shit in the modern day. People who, have, have, who are really not that entertaining and shit like that. Or have no character. Okay? But seriously, come on here. This is the 30th anniversary of Raw, and it gets cut off. I understand that, and this is WWE's fault. Apparently, they haven't had, like, oh, we're going overtime on Natural Damage. We're going overtime on Monday Night Raw. They haven't gone overtime in years. Why? Because that, like, they had a contract where they can't over... But, it's first of all, you promise a show to be three hours. No matter what, you should promise to do your show three hours to be good. The three hours. And... You have three hours. Why aren't you fucking making the show fucking good properly? Like, you're, you, you, do you have time problems? Like, what the fuck? You fucking cut off a fucking, a shitty women's steel case back that no one gives, gives a fuck besides Marks. Which I'm happy actually that got cancelled. I don't give a shit about a stupid women's cage match with the women. Who gives a shit about women's goddamn wrestling besides these Marks? Especially with these unattractive she hulks But seriously. You cut that off. And you barely even had time to fucking end your show properly. What the fuck? And let's be honest here, like, this is the anniversary show. At least, like, sure, you know, it felt like an anniversary show. There were some legends and shit like that we saw. But it's like, you could have done way more with guys like Paul Kogan, Ric Flair. What they did with Undertaker was fucking amazing. Which, you know, I'm not a big fan of Biker Taker. Even though I still love the Undertaker and the Gargar. He's my number one favorite. But I thought he, what he did was, what they did was genius. It was great. But, like, where the fuck was Austin? I understand they can't have The Rock or whatever. But, but seriously. And, but the thing is. Man, I'm telling you. Like, okay, so the show. Here's the thing. Even when it, this show. Was the first hour was commercial free, and yet you still and what what's your excuse? You couldn't get things done, and the main event was full of fucking commercials. Oh my god! And I hate the play by play fucking bullshit. I hate that shit. I hate the fucking picture to picture crap. But yeah, seriously, the fact that they fucking couldn't end this show properly, they literally had to rush the ending, and it didn't even end that good. They fucking and they couldn't even break another table. My God, that's not how you want to end the show. You end this. You don't want to end a show where there's not a table breaking. Okay, seriously. There's like, I don't know. I'm surprised Mick Foley wasn't there. All like, how is Raw reunion like a better show than this? I mean, actually, uh, okay. I will say this though again. Yeah. I mean, was it better than nothing? Sure, it was better than nothing. But it's better than like Raw 20. Remember when Raw 20th anniversary happened and nothing happened on that show? Oh, but The Rock and Ric Flair. Ric Flair was already there like 
a, a weeks ago that time, and The Rock was already there at that time feuding with Punk. You know, there was no surprises on that show. Who fucking cares? But at the end of the day, sure, was it better than Raw's 20th anniversary? Sure. At least like Raw 25, I mean, Raw 25, I will give this again, the best segment to open the show with Austin and McMahon, right? Things happen on the show, fine. But at the end of the day, like, this was kind of like, it ended up being a bit disappointing, I'll be honest with you. So at the end of the day, sure, the show was okay, but still very disappointing, especially with how they ended the show. I'm sorry, that ending of the show, the way you ended that show tonight, was very disappointing. Very disappointing. Even though we knew Lesnar would be there and you might do something like, sure, I don't mind Lesnar being there. But it should have been way exciting, like, fuck. How the fuck you get cut off? Like, even for Raw's 30th anniversary, the USA Network had the audacity to cut off Raw when this show's been around for 30 years. I understand it's stupid. Like, why are they going over time? Like, they shouldn't need to go over time. They should get things done already. But, like, this show should have been exciting. Like, well, you could have essentially do. Maybe, like, Lesnar, sure, attacks Lashley, causes him the match, sure. But then they brawl. Maybe some superstars come out and then a big brawl ensues leading to the Rumble. I understand, like, well, but then what's going to happen with SmackDown? I mean, I don't know. Apparently, SmackDown's not going to matter this week because uh, Rain says he's not. He's going to worry about Sammy until fucking the Rumble. So I'm guessing what? Roman won't be on SmackDown? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this Raw. I'm just very angry that that's how you ended the show. And that fucking main event, like literally, bunch of fucking commercials. That's not how you want to end the show, dear. I'm sorry. But yeah, I don't know. Grab your Coca-Colas. Drink it, man. Honestly, I spot, I spot missing bitches go, oh shit, oh shit, okay? Man, 30 years of Monday Night Raw. Like, it could have been so much better. I would say. I mean, you had a good first hour. And then you managed to fucking do whatever. And I cannot... I'm sorry. I have to say this. I love DX. But what kind of segment was that? If anything, that segment buried DX. It ruined the credibility of DX. Make them look fucking weak. Uh, oh, we're retired. We don't want to fight. Aren't you guys like badasses? People think it's funny. But I'm sorry. That just makes them look weak. So great. DX and Kurt Angle are ruined forever. We'll, we'll get to it. But we'll talk about it. Grab the cold cold drink on your suit there. Let's shoot. Let's shoot. Cheers, motherfuckers. If that's apparently to make the new stars get over, I'm sorry. The new stars are trash. Why do you think you're even doing an anniversary? But yeah, let's end the fucking... Yeah, let's end Raw. Cut Raw off for Barmageddon. Who the fuck gives a shit about Barmageddon? Yeah, Nikki Bell. Yeah, isn't that funny? They were hyping the show with Nikki and Brie Bella, but then they cut him off. Unless that... Listen. I know the only reason, like, they get criticized is Smarks because, oh, you know, they're because they're beautiful because they're, they're not real wrestlers. Like, who fucking gives a shit? But, like, like it or not, at least they did shit. And, but the thing is, like, where were they even? Like, but yeah, let's showcase Barmageddon. Oh, yeah, fuck. I guess they're saving Stone Cold for the Rumble, but it could have been way better. He needed to be on the show. I'll be honest. Honest. <sighs> fuck it, eh? I don't know. Anyways, we'll, th we'll talk about the show, shall we? So, anyway, so let's talk about Raw for you. Uh, Raw's 30th anniversary. Or Raw is XXX. So, Raw started with Hulk Hogan. Um, which was kind of, which was definitely, you know, it's cool. It's always great seeing Hulk Hogan, the man who made Wrestling Warriors today. Ironically, today is the day where he won, you know, Hulk Hogan was born, right? I don't know why he didn't mention that. I don't know if he mentioned that or not. Apparently... The, what was funny, though, but it was, like, kind of messed up. Okay, that's also the problem. Here's the problem with this Raw, though, also. D 30 years, and then they're struggling, and then Hulk Hogan has a shitty microphone. 
I understand shit happens, but like, first of all, it's not like the only time they they struggled cutting off a show. Okay, this is not the only time they fucking struggled cutting off a show because um, I remember like one of the Raws when Undertaker was there, they cut him off. They had the audacity to cut him off. Um. You know, it, like, this show needs to be better, I swear. Uh, you know, like, they gotta do things better in terms of cutting off. Because seriously, I'm fucking shitty microphone. I understand that uh, that's always gonna sadly happen sometimes. But, like, when they check, like, unless was it on purpose for my, for Hulk Hogan fucking up? I don't think so. But, yeah, Hulk Hogan, you started off the show with, with, uh, with Jimmy Hart. Uh, he's like, you know, like, uh, it's going to be hard for Philadelphia. He struggled so saying Philadelphia. Um. I don't know, but anyways. But yeah, Hulk Hogan says, you know, it's great to be back in the whole, uh, you know, like, it's like, it's Monday Night Raw, shit like that. You know, it's it's good. You know, it's Hulk Hogan. You can't go wrong. It just, it would have been nice. It's like, could, it, could he have done something maybe to interact? I don't know, maybe somebody and current times and maybe like something similar to the Undertaker segment when Undertaker came out could have been way better oh I'm trying to oh man there's something wrong with my laptop but I wish there's something like that it's just basically Hulk Hogan says he was there which with by that logic is like what's the point you know well I was the point of him being there or whatever but it's Hulk Hogan. That's a great way. Again, this you have to understand. This, and Raw, don't you have to understand this? This was a this is a uh, an impression making show. It's a first impression show. Why? Because you're hyping this show for thirty years. This is your chance to get casual viewers to get back to watching the show or whatever. This was their first impression to get people to consistently watch. People who have never heard of Raw, but like they're here's the thirtieth anniversary. This was their first impression type of show where they have to fucking try to keep viewers or make people or make new viewers. Unfortunately, they kind of felt failed at this because, let's be honest, like a lot of, they did some stupid shit on the show. Uh, and I'm sorry, the way they ended the show quickly as they did, and also just during the show with pe people that no one really gives a fuck about and like stupidness going on. I don't think a lot of people are going to fucking watch this show again until the next anniversary. You know what I mean? It's just my opinion. It's just how it feels like, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, yeah. My laptop. Uh, hurry up. Man, they can't. They re really couldn't fucking... Heck, like, why didn't, like, the Hurt Business come out during... I mean, like, that's, the, that's their fucking problem. Okay, uh, yeah, wow, one crap comment. If they didn't have a million commercial commercial breaks in one match, this wouldn't it have been so rushed. But thank God for Brock. After that first hour, Tri Triple H just booked a bunch of garbage that killed the crowd so much that a no-DQ match didn't even get the ECW fans a chance in Philly. Yeah, that's a sad thing. Yeah, that, that fucking main event was disappointing. And, yeah, but, and the commercials really killed it, you know? Well, whatever. Ugh. Okay, so hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so they had heard a Hulk Hogan start off the show, which is good. You know, it's cool seeing a Hulk Hogan. You know, just Hulk Hogan being there to say, you know, it's typical Hulk Hogan shit. It's good stuff. Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, come on, come on. So this is the technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. There's something going on with the fucking air. How the fuck? Unless it's the fucking rain. I don't get it. I don't know. Come on, hurry. <laughs> Sorry about this technical difficulty there. I hope y'all not getting angry. Yeah, but yeah, so. Yeah, basically Hulk Hogan struggling me with the mic. And then Hulk Hogan mentioned the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. Then Raw shows the... Uh, they show basically the same video package they had on SmackDown. Which is going to show, why didn't they show the video package for this show? Basically, you're showing a video package we already seen before. Uh, like, what was the point? Like, what made this video package fucking special? You know what I mean? 
They should have basically saved that video package for just Raw. So basically, they showed the video package, I guess, to waste time at SmackDown because they had nothing better to do, I guess. You know what I mean? So, yeah. During the show, I got to say this, like, all the way, like, they kept showing this hot blonde chick behind the announce table area. And, like, she's, like, hot. Like, I was like, who is this? You know? Does anyone know who she is? Let me know so I can, you know, hit her up. I'm just kidding. But seriously, they kept showing her. So I'm guessing, like, it's, like, a hot chick. Like, he's like, wow, and I guess he's just showing her, he's like, hey, we have a hot chick here in WWE. Maybe you guys will keep watching, you know, because God forbid, a hot chick in WWE, keep, keep showing her, keep, because at least she looks like a woman that a lot of these fucking disgusting She-Hulks currently in fucking professional wrestling. And I'm just going to show, where is Trish Trash and Lita? <laughs> you know what I mean? Where are all those hot chicks, man? But Whatever. They have the Raw is X, like it's X logo. It's like a throwback to Raw is War. Like, with, the, with that analogy, like, it, this show should have been like TV 14, man. Or like an Add to Air S kind of show. You know? Why not be like an Add to Air for one night? Have Vince Russo consult, like, what you guys should be doing on this show tonight. And maybe, you know, God forbid the woman do broad panties. You know, it's funny. I said this in my live stream. Fucking Bianca Belair keeps smacking her ass. It's like, I mean, I don't think she's, like, a, attractive or whatever because, like, she comes out of she hulky But, like, you got her smacking her ass, but yet these women, they want to pretend they're serious, but yet they're smacking their ass. And also they like to fucking pose seductively on Instagram, but they don't want to be hot on fucking Raw doing bra and panties matches and shit like that. Like, come on. Like, why not? Why not see Sonya Deville in an LGBT lesbianness having a, kissing some chick and... Doing some fucking bra and panties type of shit. That would, some, that would be some good empowerment right there. But no. <sighs> but yeah. This. Oh yeah. So. Anyways. My question is honestly. They put. They did. They, they seem like to put some effort on the show. Right. On this fucking show. But yeah. Like. Why not effort for other shows. You know. Like. Why can't they put effort on all, the, all these other shows. Like. Can't, is it, is it a problem? Like, is it that hard to put some effort? I don't know what to tell you. Anyways, uh, then, yeah, then, uh, after that, then we get the bloodline, the trial, same as ain't. Originally, this was supposed to be the, uh, acknowledgement story, uh, acknowledgement, uh, ceremony for Roman Reigns. The reason why did, that that didn't happen now is not just because of The Rock won't be there or whatever. Apparently, The Rock was never planned to be there or whatever. I mean, some people say The Rock won't be at the Rumble. I still think he will because, again, be, be, apparently, according to Wrestling Observer, oh, he won't have time. That's bullshit. Same thing with Ed said, like, you know, he's not going to be there and he will be. Again, and plus, they've been, they released merchandise for The Rock, so you know he's going to come back. Um... There is rumors also that Austin might be at WrestleMania to face Roman. I'm going to do a video. I'm going to do a future video. The thing is, if you want to if, if you want to know how you sell two night WrestleManias, that's how you do it. Either Roman Reigns versus Brock and Austin on both nights. You know, you, that's how you have to do it. Or heck. Maybe Rock and Roman on one night, and the winner fucking faces Austin for the title. Austin wins the Rumble, and Austin faces The Rock. The rematch of the decade. I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll do a video. Oh, but it should be Cody. Cody's my beautiful diaper-wearing midget. Like, I, he, I want Cody to win. He's my beautiful nightmare. Fuck you. Fuck you fucking fags. Like, oh, Cody. Cody's so beautiful. Oh, f I want to suck on that neck, uh, that neck tattoo. Like, you fucked a fuck bunch of fucking fags, I swear. Um, yeah. Honestly, okay, what can if If Austin's willing to come back ne last year for Kevin Owens, you're better off doing Roman versus Austin. You have to. Like, you can't just have Austin come back and then he's gonna fucking, you know, just have his one match with Owens. You might as well do the whole shebang. Have Austin do all the types of matches he wants to do. Or he could have done. 
That way, maybe we can do, see in the future Austin versus Lesnar. I had recorded a video last year around uh, WrestleMania time when Austin like wrestled. Like it was after WrestleMania, but because I didn't upload because it was like now a certain time and plus I didn't have the time to, I will upload that video now in the future. I will upload this, this video now. Basically, you know, Stone Cold's back. Bunch of dream matches you could do. All like for, for example, now Roman versus Austin, Austin versus Lesnar, Austin versus Cena. Heck, you could always do a rematch with Austin and Owens or something, or they team up together. I don't fucking know. You could always do some sort of, sort of matches now with Austin now back. But what you gotta do, definitely, I, I do think you should do one more time Rock and Austin. That'll be the rematch of the decade, and they both retire. That's how you do it. That's how I, I would say, you know, you do in the end, end this show, you know? That's how you end a fucking show. Uh, or end a career. Basically, Austin ends his career the same way he did originally, facing The Rock. And I do think they'll have a great match still, even in their same age, because of the style they have. They have great chemistry, so why not? Oh, shit, oh, shit. But, yeah. Austin versus Edge, even? You know, it kind of has a weird style, but, you know, I wouldn't mind that. You know, all the potential matches with all the greats. Matches you couldn't have done that are legit money-making matches. I don't want to see some uh, Austin versus Rollins. Fuck that. And all Rollins go over. Fuck you. I want to see Austin versus... I want to see Austin versus my beautiful Cody. And Cody stands tall and beat him. Fuck you. Fuck off. Austin versus Cody, and Cody wins, and fucking Rollins wins, and then all these other midges win. Get the fuck out of here, I swear to God. That That's also the problem when these wrestlers come back and ruin their re re retirement. Like, but you all already did it, so who cares, you know? But at the end of the day, Austin should fucking... He should fucking, you know, like, definitely... Uh, since he's apparently coming back, there's rumors he's coming back, he should. But yeah, so uh, no Austin tonight. I guess they're saving him for the Rumble, which... Why not actually have him on the show for a little bit? It would have been cool. But, um, I mean, like, it would have been cool. Like, why not? Hit, like, uh, Owens comes out, and then Stone Cold comes out. That could lead to something with Owens and, uh, Owens and Austin. Heck, if they were smart to keep Roman Reigns on the show, why not something with even Roman to make Roman's life a living hell? Austin joins in the fight, and that would lead to the build for Austin and Roman in the future for that WrestleMania. And it'll be a surprise, like, wow, Austin's actually in the Rumble match. You know? You know, like, but honestly, it's just my opinion. But, yeah, instead of Austin being on the show, he was on a commercial to advertise Superstar Sunday or whatever. Something about, like, WWE's doctor. I know WWE's been doing, like, a documentary series for a and &E. um, I, I am a fan of that because, they, you know, because, uh, you know, they showcase, like, old wrestling documentaries and shit like that, so... I, I like it. So, but it's like, you know. But yeah. What can, you know, you can't really blame that. It's so, okay. It's cool, you know. So, yeah, we get the acknowledgement of, st uh, we get the trial standing thing. Okay, so basically they couldn't do the acknowledgement storyline. Because, uh, not just because The Rock. It's because apparently uh, uh, Rikishi got, the, got sick recently. Apparently that's the news that Rikishi got sick and some of and the Samoan people, the Samoan o o uh, Hawaii family members, they were not like they were not the they, I don't know they just didn't want to come. So because though that was one of the main reasons why that segment got scrapped and it turned to the trial of Sami Zayn, it was because of all of, again to me this made no sense. I understand they were like they were dealing with a last minute change, but. To me, it made no sense. Like, if anything, like, what would make sense that, you know, like, Roman Reigns could have said, like, you know, I was going to do a try, I was going to do an acknowledgement ceremony, but I'm done pissed at what happened with Coward Owens. It makes me angry. I'm going to blame Sami Zayn or whatever. I don't know. It could be at least something simple like that. But again, I'm just thinking to myself, why does Roman hate saying or is angry at Sami now? What, what, what did Sami do besides, like, uh, like, from SmackDown? Like, the guy did not fucking do anything. Like, I thought they made amends even on SmackDown. They did the same segment they did two weeks ago on SmackDown where he forgives Sammy. They forgave Sammy again for, like, the same segment again. 
And now, like, he has a problem again because of something with SmackDown. But how is Sa is that Sammy's fault? I don't fucking know. So then, ECW chant happened. Then, uh, then Paul says, ECW died. That's as much as I want Sammy Zayn to die. So the Jew wants the Muslim to die, people. <laughs> yeah, this is a cultural shit. I'm just kidding. I don't fucking care. But yeah, anyways, um, Paul Heyman. I, I don't. I get. I don't really get it. Why does Roman now doesn't like Sami Zayn apparently, and why does Paul Heyman now doesn't like Sami Zayn? How does that make any sense? I thought you know Paul Heyman loves Sami, but apparently something with during that Kevin Owens contract signing shit happened that led like how did that make any sense? I don't know. I don't fucking know. Roman claims that Sami is guilty of charge and shows his evidence. Bunch of, a bunch of evidence that all oh, because he didn't help the bloodline certain times and whatever. But then, Sammy says, like, I'm, I refuse to, like, I've heard of everything that you sa said after what I've done for the bloodline. And he said that he has no defense to show. And Roman felt disrespected and got angry. This is how you go treat me after I treat you like you want to treat my family. And then he demands Solo to attack him. Solo was, like, kind of reluctant, but he was going to do it. But then... This is why I, I did like this. Jay Uso stopped him. And like a good TV show, this actually kind of shows some development here. This is why I call character development, people. And I do, I am surprised that they did something like this. So Jay Uso stopped Solo Sokoa from doing the Umaga, you know, the, the fucking, the Umaga, Umaga move, the fucking was it? The someone with Spike. He was about to use it, but then Jey Uso stopped him and shows he got evidence. And this shows character development. This is how you, this is how you basically show character growth. You know, like a good show. And I'm surprised, like, wow, watch, he did this? I was like mad surprised that they show a character growth on a show. This is something you would see on, on a good TV show, you know? Heck, this is what you even show on, or see on Cobra Kai sometimes, you know? Some certain people can't trust each other, but then they, they save them. That's character growth. Jey Uso went from hating Sami Zayn to loving the guy. And they showed it. They showed that he showed his defense. And now, like, you know, uh, and then, like, uh, Jey Uso, uh, you know, says, like, you know, like, you know, we shouldn't punish uh, Sammy. He's good. You know, I got used to from hating you, but I trust you. You family. I love you. He said that. And then Rome says, you know, I found you not guilty for now. He's like, why for now? He says, but you're going to have to prove yourself, and I don't want to see you for to the rumble. And he basically says, so what? You're not going to be on SmackDown then? I don't know. Whatever. But yeah. He says like you gotta show your tr truth, like you know you gotta show prove yourself that if you are really are the bloodline or whatever. So, I like that. I really did like that. I'm not gonna lie to you. I did. I, I went from like why was the segment happening? It was kind of weird again, like why, but it ended up becoming a good segment because it showed the it showed such growth. It showed a nice character development for you know for Jey Uso for. For the bloodline, they showed they grow. They actually cared for Sammy. You know how he, he proved his loyalty and shit like that. You know, yeah. I dug it. I, I can't lie to you. I dug it. So you know, it was a good. It was a good segment. I loved it. It was a good segment. Then the bloodline. Can, so here's my problem. Uh, yeah, again, this Raw had lots of problems despite the anniversary show. It was still again not the worst show of all time. But definitely, after the first hour, the show did went downhill. So the show was basically, like, it was okay to, like, almost kind of sucking. You're lucky that this show was okay. I would rate it. Um, so, they announced the Judgment Day Usos match was for the Raw Tag Team titles. And I'm just thinking to myself, Raw Tag Team titles aren't the titles unified. And I'm just thinking to myself, really, are they going to try to split the titles? It's like, why? Why would you split the titles? Like, they were pl apparently planning to split the titles. Like, why? Because it's Raw? And, for, and I guess, second of all, they should combine the titles. Why haven't they combined the titles yet? There don't need to be two set of tag titles. 
and again, like, I really worry this is gonna be the issue. They should not be splitting the titles so for the fucking people. I kept saying that we should, well, we should uh, separate the world titles so Cody could have the title and Roman could keep them. No, 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 fuck that. No, 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 fuck that. The titles should not be should not be separated. Why? Because for God's sakes, there's no. First of all. They just unified them. How would that make any fucking sense? How would that make any sense? And second of all, why do we need two world champions? That just goes to show that one of the, one of the world champions will be weaker than the other. And not just, not just that. It's not like it's two different shows. And I'm sorry. You don't need two different champions. Because again, it devalues one of the titles. It devalues one of the other wrestlers when one of the main events than the other or whatever. What, what's going to prove the difference? And plus, at least the WWE title, the main title, will be in the main event. You know? Because guess what? Let's be honest here. With Roman Reigns, who's like the main guy currently. It, it, him, let's say if he loses the fucking WWE title. It devalues that title. Because that's the world title. That's the number one title till this day, since this company's been built. Okay? When you don't have that title matter as the number one title, it just ruins it. This is why you should not separate the title. Plus, again, this is the problem with two night WrestleManias. I, I, but the thing is, like, you don't have you need credible wrestlers, anyways. Like, that's like the only way you can make the, I guess, fucking. But I'm sorry, you. How the fuck are you gonna have Roman split the titles anyway? How does that make any fucking sense? Like, I'm sorry, you can't have that that happening. Okay, you can't. It, it's just gonna be predictable bullshit, or whatever, or just gonna be lead to stupidness. I'm in the belief, again, you don't need two world titles. Titles should not be fucking separated. The raw, the fucking world titles, the tag titles, the fucking women's titles should be combined. Um, They should not be doing that shit, okay? Because there's no... what? What's the need? Like, I am in the, agree that, sure, there should be a full-time world champion. I, don't, I mean, Ra Reigns is there, but it's, it's WWE fault for not having him on both shows. I'm telling you this. The problem with, like, I gotta tell you this. This is the problem with WWE. Why isn't fucking Roman Reigns defending the title tonight? Why not have the title defend tonight? Why not be, why not have that as the main event? Why not a steel cage match? Roman Reigns versus uh, uh, Kevin Owens. For the world title in the steel cage match, the main event of Monday Night Raw, 30th anniversary, after the whole trial shit. And then what you could have done, after War Rumble, Reigns versus somebody else. For uh, Maybe heck. I came up with this analogy on my Raw, on my SmackDown review. Why not McIntyre and Sheamus, a triple threat, based on what happened with the Usos? That could have been easily a great way to set up a match for Royal Rumble. McIntyre and Sheamus versus Reigns in a triple threat match. That would have been all right. That would have been a good. That would have been a good uh, triple threat for Royal Rumble. Maybe eventually they would, they would lead to them being the Rumble match if they lose. I don't know. It depends on when the tie goes on, the match goes on, or whatever. But like, I would have done shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't. That's why I would have done something. I would have done that. Like I, I originally said, like on my raw review last week, had doing like Rollins versus Reigns based on what happened last year. They never had like Rollins lose to Reigns to title match or whatever on the, on a TV. But I would have done that. You know, based on like what's going on currently with the Usos and the and she Sheamus and Sheamus and McIntyre, even I would have done shit like that. Um, I don't know. Like that's what I've done. Heck, this this show should have had the Hell in a Cell match. A Hell in a Cell match made event the show instead of the Steel Cage. That shit was should have happened. And then like the fucking you know Rock, Brock Lesnar could have came out during the show. I don't know, like, could have came out during the show, during the U.S. title match. You, This show should have been booked way better, I'll be honest. Should have been booked like a big show, you know? I don't know, it just felt like it kind of felt half-assed in a way, you know? I understand the Royal Rumble's coming up, but it's just like you could have done way th bigger things. Heck, like, what you could have done, again, ending of the show, even if you end the show with the U.S. title match, you could have done maybe like the Herp is coming out, attacking Lesnar, trying to get, and then people coming out, Having an issue with the hurt business, I don't know. And then fucking, I mean, or Judgment Day, I don't know. People maybe a blow. I don't know. Everybody comes down and fucking brawl, leading to the Rumble shit. Even though like, well, that makes SmackDown. I don't know. But yeah, they title match, a uh, world title match, Hell in a Cell, Roman Reigns and fucking Kevin Owens. 
and then fucking, you know, I don't know, Bloodline comes out even, I don't know, to stop. And then, like, maybe McIntyre, Sheamus, certain, lots of people coming on Raw. And then, well, Contrast Barrow Raw leads to SmackDown. More shit going on. Big, big, big craziness going on SmackDown. They got booked SmackDown good if, if, if you know, I mean, Perfect World SmackDown would have been booked good and whatever. They got to do crazy shit. I don't even think they're going to book SmackDown good, unfortunately, this week. Because it's like, because they only really seem to care about Raw, sadly. Which I understand, but it's like, you guys still kind of make sh the show good for SmackDown. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. But, I don't know. If they're going to do, okay, still Reigns versus Reigns versus... And I, I know that you can't change what happened, right? But since they're still going to do Reigns and Owens on fucking Royal Rumble, they got to do stipulation. They got to do stipulation. Because this is a regular match, I'll be honest with you. It's not really be, like, make me feel something important, I'll be honest with you there. Maybe make that a Hell in a Cell match. They were apparently planning to do the Hell in a Cell match at Royal Rumble. Shouldn't that mean match be inside Hell in a Cell? I was hearing that was supposed to be the case. What happened? I don't know. Um, the Usos first... Okay. The blow... Okay. First match... Do you, oh yeah, oh, I, I think I was already getting to this, but I, I went all off topic. The Usos defeated the Judgment Day for the Raw Tag Titles. Oh yeah, I remember I was calling about the fucking title shit. Man. <laughs> so, do you, I mean, I hope I'm going more in depth than I could because I think it's important for a Raw review, really. So the Usos defeated the Judgment Day with the help of saying Uso. So basically, I was worried. I was actually worried because a lot of entries have been happening recently. I was like, wow, they're actually going to have Jimmy Uso get injured. Like, Jimmy Uso actually legit got injured. I'm thinking now storyline base. I used to tell like, wow, should he legit got it hurt? But it's probably like a, like a you know a, a ruse because the bloodline, the the fucking judgment they pulled the same shit three uh, weeks ago, and I guess it's like a kind of revenge type of thing. So, or it's like you know kind of that same way. So basically. Jimmy uh, Uso got replaced, even though like shouldn't they get disqualified forfeit no matter what? Jimmy Uso got injured, but then Sami Zayn replaced uh, Jimmy Uso. Same shit basically what happened before, and he defeated the Judgment Day for the Raw Tag title, or the Tag title. They uh, announced, like, the winner and still, Undisputed Tag Champs. They announced that. Like, oh, wow, really? You're, you're, oh, so it's Undisputed now still. But, yeah, so Sami Uso, basically, they basically kind of pull a Freebird rule type of thing. I, ho I honestly, that's what I would like. I would like if Sami Zayn counts as a tag champ and it's like a free bird rule. I would like if they do that, like a free bird rule with the Usos. Heck, even Sol Sokola sometimes defend the tag titles. He'll be a tag champ count. Heck, even Roman. Roman is like considered the tag champ too sometimes. You know, that would be all right. So yeah, but yeah. So they had Sami team up with J Jay Uso, and I did like what they did. I liked. The My problem with this, okay. Commercial free. I, I mean, the I will say that this is the advantage of like commercial free. With a match like this, it was actually not bad. I'm surprised how not not bad this match was, and it definitely got good when the match was like kind of ending. But that's the problem. Like these matches need to have like certain time limits, and they can't just go long for the sake of going long. They need to have like, certain, like the only reason why this match got good is because they started doing the big moves towards the end of the match, and then fucking you know when Sami Zayn got involved. That's when the match actually started getting good, picked up. That's because they were, like, ending the match. And that's when I started to actually enjoy it, you know? So, I wish matches were more like that, you know? Just, like, picking up the pace and kind of, like, don't need to be too long, but straight to the point. So, but overall, the match was good. Oh, you know, like, I, I, I thought, and I'm happy. Like, I'm happy what they did. I like what they did. So, really good. Really good stuff. Then JBL and Corbin were with the Godfather and Farouk. A throwback APA type of segment, you know, playing with poker and shit like that. Um, yeah, like, they're, they're strongly getting, apparently, like, who is this guy? They were, like, acting like Corbin was, like, who is, like, they didn't know who Corbin was. But then, um, then they had money. And, you know, it's like, you know, oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, this is your ticket. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, the kind of certain, like, it's like going to a club sometime type of deal. So, you know, there you go. So it's, like, kind of funny, I guess. Picks up old Raw with the old Ad Jura song. 
it was cool seeing some old raw memories, but it's like, you know, who the fuck gives you some of the recent ma raw memories, you know? But, you know, what can you do? You know, I, I guess they try to be fair or whatever. Then we see, see LA Knight. There was rumors of what they were going to do with, with uh, LA Knight, Bray Wyatt tonight, or a certain thing, or Undertaker. I'm glad how they did it, or I'm surprised how this segment was. But yeah, so LA Knight comes the segment. He calls Wyatt an incel playing with puppets uh, in, his, in his segment. Uh, saying it's Raw 30th anniversary and Legends living their past their glory and he challenges Legends to fight him. Then The Undertaker comes out. The Undertaker, they at first had the fucking, you know, the gong, the fucking, you know, The Undertaker dead man uh, blackout. But then, they, it, it, then it cuts to the uh, Kid Rock song. So, uh, The American Badass. The Undertaker, though, was struggling with his bike. So that kind of f killed the feel. I didn't mind it. It was like, wow, I was a surprise. Like, shit, this is a surprise. Even though they were showing some certain cl certain pictures that Undertaker was going to be an American badass look. But, again, it, it just felt to me it should have been the Undertaker as the damn man. Or, heck, he should have been like a hybrid. I mean, he was kind of somewhat like resembled the hybrid from WrestleMania 36. But if anything, it should have been somewhat more like how he was in WrestleMania 36, the look. But he was still whatever. But it was kind of cool. Like, you know, okay, I get it. The Undertaker is no longer... It's like we now know who Undertaker is. They, You know, Undertaker is no longer really the dead man. So what can you really do? So, But it would have made more sense because of the Bray Wyatt shit. But it was cool what they did. I, I was... It was cool. Undertaker came out. Um, he was in the ring, and and then La Knight mentions how he agrees with like he leave La Knight leaves the ring. He mentions how he says like you know, uh, uh, Taker, I, I watched I watched you to Joe Rogan's podcast uh, and saying wrestlers today are soft, and I agree with you, and I will you know, but I will save you from the under uh, I will save you Undertaker from the Undertaker. Uh, I was like, what, was he talking about the SummerSlam Undertaker, that, <laughs> his cousin Undertaker, that, you know, I remember when they had the, the Undertaker versus Undertaker match, but that like, yeah, he's mentioned, you know, a real Undertaker, you know, when a person dies, so shit like that, but, uh, I liked it, I like what they were doing, um, Bray Wyatt shows up, let it black out, and then LA Knight uh, go, slowly goes back into the ring, and Undertaker get, gets it by to hold him with a choke. Tosses him to Bray Wyatt, does his sister Abigail. I liked it. I just wish Undertaker talked for a little bit. Um, but he does whisper something to Wyatt. We don't know what he said, but it was alright. I'm not going to lie to you. This makes Wyatt look way better than he did recently. It And this is probably the best way, what the best one of the best things they could have done with Undertaker in, in, in an anniversary. I'm surprised. Like, what they, um, it was better than, I guess, just him coming out and talking. Like, I'm glad he did something. If anything, this is one of the perfect segments to do in terms of a legend collaborating with the modern wrestlers. Why? Because it not only, it didn't bury LA Knight specifically, it helped LA, it helped Bray Wyatt, who is the current wrestler today, it helped Bray Wyatt. It kind of helps LA Knight in a way, just interacting, but it's just like him, just, it, it didn't, like, it was not just entirely Undertaker doing, you know, a, attacking LA Knight. It was him helping the other wrestler, which is like something I, I even came up with. Like, why not, like, in one segment, have Undertaker stop some certain wrestler from escaping, which is like kind of that kind of shit, which I, you know, I'm happy they did. So I liked what they did with Undertaker. I really liked that. I really liked that, and he left with the fucking motorcycle. Um, you know, and, you know, kind of like, you know, blackout type of thing, you know, lighting. It's Undertaker. I love Undertaker. Undertaker's always number one. I'm happy that he's still able to, like, you know, he still looked great. Uh, and he's still a badass. And I, I you know, I love it. I, 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 again, I'm not, like, I'm not going to act like I'm a big American badass. I, 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 again, Undertaker's my number one favorite wrestler. I just was always more a fan of the dead man gimmick. Oh yeah, even LA Knight, I like how he said, I'm the Lord. I, I like how LA Knight acted tonight. I thought he was acting amazing for this show. You know, the way he was like in, intimidating, under, like, imitating Undertaker and shit. It was, it was good. 
So, you know, I, 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 I like what he did. I like what they did with Undertaker. I loved it. So that was a great segment. I, I like that. But unfortunately, that was that was the oh, that was the first hour, and that was like the best. If anything, if they ended the show like that, that would have probably been one of the best draws I have ever seen. Or or best draw like in the modern day, like one of the best draws in recent memory. Unfortunately, there was two more hours, and boy, did the show really fell off. We go backstage with the APA. We see Alundra Blaze and DDP there. She's like winning some money. All right, whatever. Then they they had the. It was supposed to be the second match, but it got canceled. I I I I, I, I laughed. I mean, I, I I felt bad for for the people who changed the channel because they were thinking this could be a long, boring women's fucking shitty She Hulk match. But all the sparks were angry because they didn't get. The women, like, people complain because that's how the show got got bad. This was always going to be terrible anyways. But I'm happy this, uh, first of all, I, again, I don't give a shit about women's goddamn wrestling, okay? I don't. I'm sorry, I don't. If that makes me sex, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. How to, you stop pretending you care about women's goddamn wrestling. You're just a fucking smart. You fucking jizz. You, you fucking talk about Bailey's ass. You motherfucking smarts pretend to care about women's wrestling, but yet y'all talking about Bailey's ass. Even though, fuck, she looks like Jay fucking Leno and drag. Fuck you. But seriously... I like what they did, though. I mean, like, I like what they did, though. If, like, if you want to, say, like, book something, heck, you, if in a perfect world, like, sure, maybe, you know, in the future, you know what, well, this should do a steel cage. I don't give a fuck. But if you really want your cage match, you could even do it on SmackDown, which no one really going to give a fuck, you know, or something. And then that would, I guess, make people happy. I don't know. But Becky versus uh, Bailey. Uh, Becky gets attacked uh, before the match. They locked the cage before the match started. I, and I kind of like what they did because it kind of builds towards the feud with Becky and Bailey. Even though I don't give a shit about them. I don't give a shit about them. I don't give a shit about the feud. But, you know, I'm just happy that the match didn't happen. It's just like, you know, it kind of builds the fire, right? Even though, like, I don't give a shit, but it builds the fire. It builds the feud. I don't know. But, yeah. I'm, uh, it, it just, like, wow, what a waste of the cage, right? You know, like, it does help. It was just like, why not? Why not even, like, why not? What they could have done, they could have had, like, maybe brought Bobby Lashley, the man, the cage to come down. Kind of like a sort of, you know, old school type of thing where a wrestler demands a cage to come down during a segment because the cage was there. I don't fucking know. Uh, like, that happened before something, like, I believe in wrestling, right? That happened before certain times. I think even, like, RVD versus Jericho. Heck, I remember, I remember, like, go back to, like, Hell in a Cell. They had a Hell in a Cell. They brought it during, t down during few times in certain matches, you know. One, the first blood match with Kane and Austin. And the other, like, was during, even, like, recently in fucking the PG era with, like, Cena and Ambrose versus the Authority, you know. But, yeah. We got Raw more picks with tonight's net. I hate that people are going to look that bad as respect. Like, tonight's night. Night, tat, and stuff. Like, they, they really got to play that song. Get the fuck out of here. So they show more raw, raw picks, you know, raw doorbacks, you know, all that kind of shit. Then, they had... Okay, this was... I love DX, and I love Kurt Angle. But this was definitely a joke. What a fucking joke this was. DX came out. And I was thinking to myself, holy shit, is that Billy Gunn? But then, it was Kurt Angle. And I was like laughing, I was like, what, are they going to do like a, a Kurt Angle has Alzheimer's gimmick? So, I was so, I was laughing, seeing Kurt Angle in this, but it was sad at the same time. Because they just made Kurt Angle look like a fucking goof. Kurt Angle, again, the wrestling machine, ruthless aggression. Yet, this, they made this guy look like a goof. And DX came out as weak goofs, too. DX, uh, you know, they do the intro. It says, the road dogs just saved the battle of Billy Gunn. And it, what, what? You're not Billy Gunn? It, yeah. And just like, uh, 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 Kurt Angle's like, uh, but, well, I, I always want to be in DX. 
And then he's, oh, I have the DX shirt, and then like he acts retarded, like like what is that part of the, is that part of a DX deal? It's like they made they made him look retarded, and I'm, it's like wow. Unless like they thought like you look like Billy Gunn, that could be the funny joke, but like, wow. They really made D uh, Kurt Angle look retarded. Like I'm sorry. Like what the fuck did you do to Kurt Angle? I'm sorry. Again, this is, was one of the examples of ruining yourselves. And the funny thing is, the person who bo uh, who books the show was part of this segment. This was one of the worst. Seg I'm sorry. This was one of the cringiest DX segments I've ever seen. I love DX, but this is like a shell of their. Of their former selves. Okay? This is definitely a way step down from their 20th anniversary segment. So it becomes a goofy as hell segment. It was hilariously dumb and goofy. I mean, it was some, some of it was funny, but it was still, it was still dumb. But then it becomes cringy. A run spin and okay, so Empyrean comes out. And they're scared to fight them. Imperius says, you know, look at you degenerates, you know, you bunch of degenerates, you guys are ruining the sport. First of all, I hate when wrestlers say, the sport of wrestling, act like this is real. I'm sorry, guys, you still fucking, you're fake. You're still fake, you're not real. I'm sorry to break it to you. But like, you know, it's okay, it's smarky of them. They're trying to act like they're real wrestlers. No, you're not, I'm sorry. You, but then, they challenged DX and Kurt Angle, and they're, they said, we're retired. I understand Triple H is like, you know, he, he's hurt. I get it. Or, or he, he'll die, unfortunately, if he fight. But could you make it like, you know what? Couldn't they made it like, if they did, if they can't fight, couldn't they just mention that as much as we would definitely beat the shit out of you, we can't because unfortunately we would, like, we, like they, they could just easily mention that or just don't do anything at all. They could just easily mention, trust us. If we were medically clear, we would beat the crap out of you guys. But we know certain people who can, who currently, who will beat your asses. They could have easily done that, but no, they took, they took, they made themselves look like pussies. And I'm sorry, that is not how you do it. If that's supposedly supposed to make these modern wrestlers look good, I'm sorry. That makes you, that ruins your legacy. So not only DX look like goofs, they kind of ruined their legacy tonight. And it's like, wow. They really, really ruined their badassery. They, they made themselves look like goofs. They went from being badasses to goofs. And that killed it for me. That really killed this show for me, honestly. Seeing that. It broke my heart somewhat. Because of DX, who are, again, they're supposed to be degenerates, but they were really acting degenerate. According to Perium, they were acting degenerate, even though they were having been degenerate since, like, 1999. Heck, 2006, sure, mercy. Uh, heck, 2009 was more of them being degenerate than what they're doing currently. And people were complaining about DX being kind of PG-ish. I don't know, man. Uh, and you really think... That, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Let's make ourselves look weak to make the Street Profits and Seth Rollins look badass. Like, like no one... Fuck, like, really, we give a shit about Seth Rollins and the Street Profits. Yeah, wanna be crime time... Fucking weird motherfuckers who no one gives a shit about. Annoying fucks. And fucking Seth Rollins with that. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I'm gonna act like a fake opera. I don't know if I'm a face or a heel. Again, what is Seth Rollins? Is he a face or a heel? I don't get it. The guy's a fag. Yeah, have, yeah a guy who looks like a fuck. Who acts like, like a flamboyant faggot. Like, 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 like you want to see that. Fucking asshole. <sighs> They say, oh, I wonder who faced Imperium and Rollins and, and Street Profits came out because they, they point to them. Then, trip, then they say, oh, let's make it official. They look at Triple H and he's like, I, I know I'm the booker, but you know, it takes, I, it's hard to be a booker than you. He's like, motherfucker, just make the match. You're the booker. So he was acting like a goof for literally no reason and acting stupid. This just leads to Ted Young coming out, which I get sure, but there could be more genius ways to make that make more sense. Of Teddy Long coming out. Which I don't mind. But it's just like, well, great, a tag team match. Yeah, more shitty tag team matches. We had shitty tag team matches without Teddy Long coming out to say tag team matches on SmackDown. Now let's get a shitty six man tag with these shitty teams. Yeah, wow. And then Kurt Angle kept trying to ask 
DX and they kept ignoring him was, I got an idea. How about I be the special ref? And he's like, you know, he's acting like a child. Oh. I'm sorry. It was painful to see how they aren't acting now, okay? Whatever. <sighs> the Raw is a Street Profits to Visa Imperium. I'm, 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 I, I, you know, I thought Triple H likes Imperium and they make Imperium look weak. Oh, this is like true of Vince McMahon booking. You know what? Fuck it. Where is Vince McMahon? I don't give a fuck what people say. Vince McMahon would be cool to be on this show. Again, he's the one who made this shit. I don't give a fuck. Have him on the show. But yeah, they uh, the baby faces do Kurt Angle's moves and who cares? Who cares? It's just retarded. The Million Dollar Man loses to Happy Corbin, but I, uh, uh, Arwin, um, Erwin R6, no, uh, Mike Rotunga, the, the taxes guy, he says, don't forget to pay your taxes. It takes all the money that JBL and Corbin made. And, you know, he just gives them 100 bucks. Like, you earned that. I know the feeling. Trust me. Like, when you, uh, it's basically, it was basically an example of payday, you know, but the government takes your money, you know, taxes and shit like that. And also an example of, you know, it, it's funny. Because there's like a recent story, I remember, that a per the person who won like the, 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 who won the fucking Mega Million lottery shit, they had to fucking get, get that, some of the money taken out because of taxes. Like half of the million dollars, apparently. Man, fuck the government, that's what I have to say, huh? Um, yeah, so I mean, I can, I, I get the feeling. It's funny, but it's like, it's not funny because like, you know, it's like, eh, it's whatever, you know. More Raw picks with, with the Raw 2016 theme. Surprisingly, not the worst Raw theme of the modern era. So I will give it that. Then last, she gets into, interviewed by Hot Kathy Kelly. Uh, she she said, you know, she uh, she uh, basically last she says, there's no no DQ. He basically explains the match. It was like we get what no DQ match is. Oh, I mean, no excuses. Okay, what do you do? But you know, I'm not turning. I dealt with Brock. So he basically referenced Brock like, you know, oh, you know, this is planting the seeds for later on tonight, what happened. But then MVP comes out and is like, you know, let's get the big get together. Basically, that's like, you know, whatever. Then I'm the nature boy, the nature boy, the nature boy, the super super and you know, nature boy, here's my trainee daughter, Rochelle Flair. <laughs> Yeah, so it just hit coming out to announce Charlotte. I hate whenever Charlotte does. You know, I, don't I just hate it when Charlotte comes out? She winks like she acts a duff. I'm sorry, you're not attractive, bitch. She acts. She's like, you know, I hate when she comes out. I have to like give a wink, like she's acting seductive, like she's Trish Stratus or whatever. And not only that. She proceeds to fucking always project, and it sounds so manly, like, I am the woman! Like, shut up! You can't talk! You're a man! Holy fuck. She talks, and then she says, oh, this is always gonna be my home! Shut up! And then Bianca, okay, yeah, bitch, yeah, bitch, sassy black bitch. Mm -hmm, I got my big weaver shit. I'm going to Sharkisha your ass. You said, I need, uh uh, this is my home, bitch. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know, fuck it, combine the titles. Y'all you, bitches are ugly, but you know, fuck it, combine the titles. I was like, maybe that, that'll be planned to see to WrestleMania. That's what I was thinking. Hopefully not the main event, but like, fuck it. They just talk about themselves, but then Sonya Dykefield, the only LGBT hot bitch that I ever fucking seen. Basically says some truth and some stupidness. She said that saying Char Charlotte Flair basically flew Ric Flair just to introduce herself, which is, yeah, it's the truth, basically. And says, oh, it's the 30th anniversary, but instead we're showcasing the past. Why not the present? And they're not like, who cares? Y'all all trash. The present is trash. Fuck the future. The future is garbage, right? But then Sh Sonya Deville, she said, you know, oh, why not I defend, I don't know, why not I, uh, you know, I, I run the show. And guess what? The show was not good at all. And then it just leads to Bianca. Yeah, why don't you face me, bitch? It's like, who? Yeah, why don't you face me? Like, fuck you, bitch. No, didn't we see this match many times? And then Sonya Deville uh, loses to Bianca Belair. The match ends right after commercial. A lot of these matches are stupid. I'm, I'm sorry, this is the problem with matches nowadays. 
all these matches don't end before commercial. Again, back in the day, when, like when wrestling was good, not every match needed to be long and bo uh, boring. Okay, every uh, or appeal to fucking work rate fans. All these matches had time limits and ended when they needed to before commercials. Because I'm sorry, commercials does hurt the match. Why couldn't these match end after before the commercial? I don't know what to tell you. There's a Bianca Belly, yeah, and you know, I forgot about being a bad Alexa Bliss, you know, I want to beat that attractive bitch, because he had more sexy than bitch. But then Alexa Bliss backstage, oh, you know, yeah, I'm going to beat you, bitch, whatever. I don't know, she's like, you know, she looks in the mirror and says, you know, I'm gonna, you ain't going to beat my ass, I'm gonna, I'll save your ass because you're black, or whatever, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll, and then a Cody Rhodes promo, fuck Cody Rhodes, okay? Oh, I'm surprised, well, I'm, I'm over an hour, wow. Oh man, I don't know how long this review is gonna upload, but yeah, um, I'm going an hour over. T I'm going an hour. This is probably one of my longest reviews, but hey, it's like in depth, people. It's really in depth, you know. So, yeah, look at Bliss. You know, uh, oh, look in the mirror. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna need Uncle Howdy or Bray Wyatt or whatever. So that's what she said. Um, I don't know. Wasn't there supposed to be? She was supposed to choose stipulation. I don't know. Whatever. A Cody Rhodes video package, it's, again, it's annoying. Stop with this annoying shit. Like, I would rather Cody Rhodes just showed up to the show. Like, why not just show up to the show? Because I'm sorry. First of all, I'm thinking this video package shit is going to kill Cody's momentum. It's really going to kill, even though I don't give a shit about Cody Rhodes. It's really going to, it's going to feel like you're forcing him down our throats. That's the same shit where you fucking killed Roman Reigns for. You know, with that, and again, like, I'm sorry. If he's not going to rumble, what's the point? Like, I hope he does win, but, you know. Um, so Stone Cold was not on the show, but he was on a commercial to advertise Superstar Sunday, whatever, on A&E. WWE 2K23 promo with Cena. I, I, I mean, I don't mind it. Apparently, the showcase mode is like, we have to beat, we have to face Cena and beat him or whatever. I don't fucking know. Uh, John Cena's on the cover of 2K23, but why not Cody? John Cena, what do you think sells more, John Cena or Cody Rhodes? Maybe if Cody Rose was actually making money, then sure. Dumbasses. Uh, Miz is there. He was being annoying, which I'm happy. What I'm happy how it kind of ended. Miz was there basically saying, where the fuck was Miz TV or whatever. And, and I'm surprised. Like, wow, there's like no talking segment. Like, usually they would do a talking segment. I mean, well, you would think like a throwback on an anniversary show, there'd be a talking segment. Well, there's not even a talking segment for Miz TV. Um, I mean... If Edge was around, there should have been a cutting edge. I was thinking, why not Piper's pit? But then I feel like, oh, fuck, Roddy Piper is dead, unfortunately. So, you know, I kind of remember that. But yeah, Miz is there. He's like, where the hell is Miz TV? Where's my talk show? Where's my title shot? But, et cetera. Then Kevin Owens came from the crowd and stuns him. I would like it like this would let, like, Stone Cold coming out. Or, heck, some, like, heck, why not some legends? Why not, you know, you know I don't know, collab, and then that could have, like, even though that would maybe rule, like, oh, why is Stone Cold in the Rumble? Because that might be the thing, maybe. But, like, that would have been cool. Like, why not Stone Cold, uh, Steve Austin, Kevin Owens collab in this segment? Attacking Miz. Heck, more legends. He, heck, Hulk Hogan could came out during this segment, too. Ric Flair, even. I don't know. Hey, give me back my f figure four. I don't fucking know. Shit like that. And then it would have been way better. And then, you know. But then Kevin Owens says... You know, I'm here to bring no change. You know, go, uh, raise your guilty of keeping the title hostage. I want that title back because I need something to wear. Because I can't tell my pants. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die trying. You know, I'll probably die next year with eating a bunch of cheeseburgers. But yeah, like he basically said, oh, no, it raises guilty. And you know, you keep the title hostage. And I'll give you my word. I'll win the title, whatever. Because I'm here to bring more change. I don't know. It's fine. Unfortunately, the hot blonde chick disappeared. They, again, the hot blonde chick was like behind the fucking announcement. They kept, they kept showing her. It's like, holy shit, this beautiful, this hot, this chick is beautiful. And then, you know, a funny story. When I went to one of the Raws last year, I kept seeing like some cute shit. I, I'm surprised. I got to tell you, man. I'm surprised, like, how many cute chicks would be on Raw. That goes to show, like, fuck. You barely would see any hot chicks in AEW. But, like, fuck. 
I'm surprised. But like, here's the thing. One of the Raws, I, I saw some hot chicks, right? There was like hot chicks in the and I was like hoping maybe I'll talk to one of them after the show's over. But then they disappeared. And then like, they get replaced by a bunch of fucking random people. Is that like a thing? Or like apparently maybe they... Or, I don't know. Unless because... I don't know if my theory is unfortunately the hot blonde who kept they kept showing throughout the show. Um, she got tired raw and probably left. And she got replaced by a bunch of fucking weird children. Great. I mean, I love kids. Don't get me wrong. I love kids. But really, uh, man, kids, you killed the show. <laughs> you, you took away my hot blonde, bro. What the fuck? Y'all kids cock locked. <laughs> well, not, I mean, I, I mean, but whatever. But I don't know. Maybe that was the theory. And maybe the blonde was to keep the fucking people watching, you know? Because, so like, hey, we have a hot blonde watching? Why not you guys watch? But seriously, where is that hot blonde? Who is she? Is she a celebrity? Like, fuck. But seriously, so yeah, they had a hot blonde. and But again, like, I was like on one of the sh Again, I went on one of the shows. It was like the same scenario. Kept seeing hot... I mean, maybe, maybe the same chick. I don't know. I kept seeing seeing this blonde. And then, uh, and then fucking she disappeared like when the show was almost over. Unless that's the thing, like, where some people leave the show early or... They just, I don't know, they get a better seat? I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. But, like, damn, man, why this happen? <laughs> but, I don't know, it's just... Maybe, you know, that's what happens when the show sucks. When the show sucks, they'll leave early. Sadly, she missed the Cowboy Brock. You know what I mean there? Uh, then the main event, Theory defeated Lashley in a no-DQ US title match. I'm sorry, the commercials killed it. This the commercials killed this match. The, and I'm sorry, picture for picture does not work. Literally, before the end of the show, I was worried about timing. And it turns out the timing was bad. Literally. And again, I'm surprised. Again, this is Raw 30th anniversary, and yet they fucking managed to do... Okay, this is 30 years, and they couldn't end the show properly. But yeah, fucking literally. Lashley... Okay, so last year was good to defeat Theory, but then Lesnar came out, and they literally had to rush it. La Lesnar came out, he came out quick, and then he fucking F5 Lashley, then he F5 Theory by he F5 and two Lashley, causing a pin, and that led to Lashley losing. First of all, this no DQ match was one of the lamest no DQ matches, sadly, because you you barely uh, it only got better the last few minutes, but then commercial happened. Again, back in the day, no DQ matches were like hardcore or whatever. But unfortunately, this show, by the time the second hour happened, killed the vibe. And the main event kind of was killed. Even for, like, when Lesnar came out. Even though the crowd popped. It felt rushed. That the crowd didn't really care much. Like, fuck. Because they rushed the match. The ending of the match. Theory got put through the table by Lashley, but the Lesnar came out, and the Lesnar F5, yeah, and then, but the table, the other table didn't break, which looked like could have been a spear, you know, for, a spear for lap. I guess one of the table, like, they broke the wrong table, I don't fucking know. And the show literally ends with just Lesnar, like, with, with, with Theory winning the match, and the show just ends, and they couldn't even cut the show properly with, with the fucking the stupid Kevin Patrick guy talking. Oh, yeah, one of the matches, the, uh, Jerry Lawler was commentating, I think the fucking... The Street Profit match. Which just goes to show why isn't Jerry Lawler even on commentary. Fuck it. Why not Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler be back on commentary? You have JBL back? Have him on commentary too. Have fucking... Get JR back. Okay, call him back. JR, Jerry on Raw. Michael Cole, JBL on SmackDown. I don't fucking care. Something. One or the other. I don't know. We need some old school back. We need some coolness back. We need some good commentaries. Because all these commentaries suck now. Oh yeah, what was up these commercials? Like, seriously. Is it because of fucking commercial free? I don't know. But, like, wow. That was a shitty way how they ended the, the, sh the, the show. They cut off Raw for Barmageddon. This was 30 years of Raw, people. And they literally had the audacity to cut the show like that. And Raw itself was bad enough to not have good timing. But again, I don't really blame the USA Network because they're fucking... They're, they're not in fucking book shit properly, too. This is the problem with time limits. This is why you need time limits. That's the problem, people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, that was raw for you. Wasn't the worst raw. Sure, Adam, 
in terms of this year already, this is the better, the, the only better loss so far of the year. But it's only because, like, like, but it's not really much to say because it's the 30th anniversary. They have to rely on old timers and shit like that to make a better show. You know? They have to rely on old people. They have to rely on, like, because the 30th anniversary special. And sure, they did seem to put effort on his show compared to other times. But, like, if you're willing to put effort, which I'm not saying you should put, like, if anything, you should put extra effort on a show. But why isn't there effort in general for Raw and SmackDown? I don't know what to tell you. Very disappointed with the ending. Very disappointed somewhat with the show because you could have done way better things. I don't know which to say is worse, Raw 25 or Raw 30. I think Raw 25 definitely had a great opener. And sure, looking back at it, it's way better show than this. Um... I mean, but I will say this show, it had a great first hour, so, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. At least, I will say, this, the only resembled thing about this show is better than Raw 20th Anniversary. Because remember when Raw 20th Anniversary happened and they did nothing? Yeah. But it goes to show how bad a quality it was. But yeah, this is like, sadly, the best Raw of the year because of how shitty the other Raws are. That's literally it. Overall, good first hour. Certain things are fine after that, but my god, you ruined DX and Kurt Angle. I will never forgive this company for that. And I will never forgive that fucking... Again, the ending of Raw, doesn't that show you why time limits matter? Anyways, I will say, people, until next time, peace, yeah, bye. That was Raw 30th Anniversary. That's my thoughts. Raw, so far, sure. In terms of... The rating of Raw was it the best Raw. Uh, I mean, it was best Raw in recent memory, but it's not saying much. But it wasn't really a great show in general. It was okay. Mercifully, I would say it was an okay show. But by just a little bit. Great first hour. But fuck. Did you really fucked up uh, after that? And you really fucked up with the ending too. Because that ending really definitely kind of took off points from this show. Because like the way you ended it and cut off the show. Like, come on here. You could have done way better. Anyways, till next time. Peace. Yeah, bye. Come on, it's Raw 30. 30 years and you still, you're still you struggling to try to make a good show years later. Come on, this show used to be fucking effortly, effort after effort, great shows. And I don't know. Come on, this was a making show. And now you probably will lose viewers next week because it's like you didn't do enough to fucking keep viewers, unfortunately, it seems like. Till next time. Peace. Yeah, bye.